All right, testing, one, two, three. Am I coming through? Sibilance, sibilance. Okay, good. Okay, just about 11 o'clock. Uh, this is a one person panel here. Hello. All right, close enough to 11 o'clock. Let's get started. Uh, hello, my name is Kale Division. I am running the um, Intro to Gumpla and Plastic Models panel. Um, so to start things off, I'll just let everyone know that I am not an expert. I have been doing this for a couple months, but I wanted to share the things I love about it and how to get into this hobby. Um, I do see in the chat there is someone who probably has a bit more experience than me, you know, feel free to answer questions if they come up, otherwise I will. So, um, please also excuse my nervousness. This is the first panel I am hosting. So, so it's a bit of preamble. Um, I like building things, you know, I build programs, I write, uh, I put together my own Ikea furniture. Um, 
And up until pretty recently, I've been big into Lego as kind of, you know, a building tool, building toy. You know, not so much playing with it, but, you know, just the act of putting things together has been something I enjoy. So it wasn't that, but a couple months back, I just on happenstance happened to pick up one of these kits here. And these things, honestly, if you're building to building things, these things are amazing. So there's this kind of misconception that you need, you know, like paint and glue and all this whole workshop area. No, you really just need like a little cutting tool and barely even that. If you really want to, you can put these together using your hands. Um, So to get started, give me a second here. Basically, to get started in this hobby, all you really need. Okay, there we go. Sorry, it wasn't scrung down here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, um, all you really need is the kit and some sort of little cutting tool. Um, so, if we go and you get one of these, okay, that's move out of here. Yeah. Go back kit. It's why isn't this going down automatically? Yeah, yeah. You don't need paint. Um, also, why is it backwards? Or is that just how it looks to me? Okay. Um. You know, you go buy a kit, it costs like, I don't know, $10, $6. Depends on how complicated you want to get. Um, yeah, that's four. It's on the stream. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, you know, if you want to get big into the hobby, you can go and buy a kit that's like 100 bucks. you know, and spend probably a couple of weeks putting it together um, or just, you know, one of these is $12 or this ho-ho kit that was like uh like eight um yeah so inside open it up you get a bunch of these little plastic runners here and so like 99 percent of what you're doing yeah perfect grade yeah oh yeah yeah there's these have been kind of hard to find um they only made a couple and they seem to be sold out a fair bit. So I was lucky to get my hands on this one here. Um, you open it up and you get these plastic runners. Why isn't the chat strung down automatically? Ah. You get these plastic runners and you just break the pieces off. You know, you're... It's recommended to use a little cutting tool, but if you just apply a little bit of force, they just break off right, your hand. Um, and then you just put them together, and that's basically all you gotta do. Um, oh yeah, mega scales. Uh, th this is the thing though. Um, most of these kits are Japanese, and so they are, you know, you gotta import them or find a store that's importing them. So it's a little bit, you know, you take what you can get. Yeah, you get it. Um, but yeah, and these are in Japanese, but if you look, you know, it gives instructions that are actually pretty easy. You know, uh, my camera is not great, but you know, it's like, it's all graphical. You can just see, oh, you need a part A2, number 14. Then you go and you find, uh, where is A2 here? A2. One. So you go find A2, part number 14, you break it off, and then you find the next piece, and the next piece is basically, yeah, screw cutters, absolutely. Um, I had my screw cutters here a moment ago, but they seem to have disappeared from my desk. 
I'm just gonna show off a couple of different kinds here, but oh, there we go. Here we are. So what's recommended is sprue cutters. Um, so these are my favorite here. They are God hands. They're a little bit expensive. They are purpose built uh, model cutters. Um, but honestly, you can use pretty much anything that works. I know some people starting out have just used nail files. Um, or you can just use your hands, but yeah, you take, you go find the right piece here. And you cut it out like this. Oop. Oop. That. Get another man in camera here. Paying attention to that. This. Here. Up here, and you can trim it up a little bit. Just snap it together, like so. It's, it's that simple. You just repeat that, you know, a couple dozen times, and you're done. And honestly, it's really working. So, start out. What's recommended is to get a CL CJ7. Shield, oh, a, a Jeep seat. Said, okay, cool. Yeah, I have not had much experience with the um, the non Gundam kits yet. Um, I've been meaning to get into that. I um, but the other thing is that you, unless you are into you know mecha or anime or a couple other places couple other things yeah um you're kind of limited in which what your options are as far as kits um you know you do have a couple pokemon kits if you know you know a little hard to get hands on there are some very nice uh anime kits for various anime like dragon ball here this is pretty, uh these are pretty nice um uh, you know, but you're not going to go out and find like a Game of Thrones kit. I, I kind of wish, you know, there were, but you, you take what you can get. You know, some people, including me, have become fans of these things. Yeah, um, some of them are. Um, I haven't, my local Hobby Lobby does not have, you know, the Gumpa kits or any anime kits. And again, I am, we are kind of down the bio belt here. Um, but, you know, car kits, plane kits, more or less the same thing. I think some of those might need good. Yeah. So you bit, you know, 99% of what you're doing is just taking the pieces off, putting them together. Once you do, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, like, obviously, you can paint the kits. Um, usually, you do that by painting the individual pieces as you are assembling them. Um, you can, uh, but even if you don't want to do paint, there are little things you can do to touch up your kits. So I have this one here and find my marker here. Marker. What you can do to make things look a little bit nicer on the kits is just kind of touch them up with a marker a little bit. This is called panel lining. You take it um, and you just, basically all you do is you just uh, draw in on the edges here. Um, they have specialty markers for this, but honestly I find that uh, even just using little microns or even sometimes just other very fine tip markers works just fine. And yeah, I don't know if it's showing up very well here, but just making little marks on that gives a little bit more definition to it. Um, so there is a bit of artistry to it, following the instructions. Um, and then there are various decals you can add, uh, by the way. So after the fact, you can basically pose these any way you want to. Um, these are not Funko Pops that stay in. This one's being a little incorporative. You can take the weapons out pose it however you want, you know, like 
Yay. Um, and then you get, you know, there's all sorts of accessories. You get these little posing stands here that you can set up. This one's not quite in frame. Sit up here and, you know, arrange them, move them around, put them in various little action poses. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, so th this is a simpler kit here. This um, I should talk about grades of kits. So with Gundam and Gunplay especially, there are, yeah, um, various grades of kit. Um, they're all fairly good, you know, like a little weirdly, the lowest grade kit you can get is called high grade. And that's kind of a carryover from back when these were first being, you know, invented and made decades ago. And high grade used to be the old best grade, but then they made, you know, real grade, master grade. So, um, so this one here is called SD, which isn't really sort of high grade. Um, you know, obviously it is small, cartoonish. Uh, I like these personally. They are very easy to put together. They don't take up a lot of desk space, so you can just grab a lot of them. They're fairly cheap. Um, they're still pretty pulsable, but you don't have as much articulation here. Um, and if you compare that to like a couple steps higher, the master grade kits here uh, have, oh, this doesn't even fit in the frame, right? Have a lot more articulation to them. You know, you can move the shoulder, move the arm in the shoulder, elbow joint, move the hand around a little bit. The fingers actually move a bit so you can kind of make have it make a fist. Uh, this one doesn't have the individual fingers, so I cannot have it flip off the camera. But probably a good thing. I don't know if we are a PG 13 here. Um, yeah, hello. Um, and your poses, dioramas. Yes, actually, I have a little diorama here I set up. They'll fit the camera here with some Dragon Ball Z characters to show off. Oh, that's not camera work at all there. Uh, let me put this back up a little bit over. Good enough, yeah. Little. Okay. This up. There we go. So kind of having this here, and then they make little plastic part effects you can set up. So you can have a little shield here. This. This up here, have her firing a beam. You know, it's nerdy as all hell, but it's pretty cool getting it all set up. Uh, yeah. Um, so, if you're interested in this, um, what I recommend starting out with uh, is a, you know, either an SD kit if you're into. Um, if you do not mind eh, like very cartoonish things, you can get one of these SD kits. Um, specifically, one of these, uh, it's called SDCS. That's the modern kind. Uh, fairly good quality. Um, it's, yeah, near to guilty as charged. Yeah. Um, very good quality. The, there's actually kind of an internal skeleton that you build the armor onto. Whereas some of the old kits and cheap kits are, you know, the arm and armor are all one piece. Um, and then, um, but if you don't want, uh, let's see. If you don't like the cartoonish style, you have um, high grade kits, which are also fairly cheap. You know, you can find one for, you know, $12 up to $23 for the more complicated ones. 
Um, this guy here is high grade. You know, it's much kind of better proportions, more realistic. The little axe fell off. But yeah, um, you know, if you want to spend, a, that, that's what I would start with. You know, don't blow a ton of cash on here. Just, you know, 20 bucks plus getting, you know, some sort of snipper would help. Um, you can you can you can break apart the pieces with your fingers, but it does tend to leave little wear marks in the plastic. Um, so pretty much everyone recommends getting a snippers or something else that works for you. Um, if you want to go a bit higher, there are master grade kits, real grade. So so the scale goes high grade then master grade real grade at the very top there's perfect grade which can cost you know like 200 dollars a kid and up so this is very much a how complicated you want to get. yeah file set absolutely um there's a bunch of different things you might want to pick up as you invest time and money into this hobby um well kit um pick up some sandpaper maybe um to get off the little plastic nubs here. Um, see if you like, if you peer, I don't know if the camera would pick this up here. Um, peer very, very, yeah, okay, very closely. This isn't focusing well at all, but you can see little plastic uh, kind of wear marks on there from where it didn't quite go through. It's hard to see unless you're up close or yeah, on a hobby knife, yes. Um, and then I also find very useful a little set of decal tweezers for getting all these tiny little decals on there. Um, but yeah, um, it's honestly super rewarding. You get a whole army of little dudes you can put to decorate anywhere. They are more poseable and interactive than say fungal pops, you know? Um, and move flash as well. Sorry, what is flash? I am I have not encountered that term before. Use your kit strongly as well, especially when working on car kits. Yeah. Uh, any let's see, any other questions so far? Yeah, along with everything else, you are going to be putting on stickers. Um, let's see, plastic says plastic when pulling. Oh yes, the weathering. I'll let someone else answer that. I I lo I love the weathering effects I've seen some people do. Um, if you look on like Reddit, you can you see these dioramas that are basically these uh abandoned mecca that people have just left in like hills or mountains and trees and dirt have grown all over them and it just looks amazing um and it also kind of makes them look more real like they are not just toys and some hanger i so that is on my to-do list to learn how to do uh along with general painting and so on and so forth um i want to grab up my freezer jeep yeah all right um yeah well, while i have a captive audience i got see if i can get this guy out without breaking anything a split case here yeah knock something over already i got this guy that i'm working on here the uh M.G. Sazabi, who's not all fitting in the frame again. That's great. Okay. That fell off. Yeah, okay. You don't know, worry about that here. Yeah. Yeah. Big guy here. Yeah, too large for frame, yes. 
Yeah, it, it gets this big. It actually gets bigger. This is uh, oh, the camera's slowly panning down on its own. Uh, this is still not even the largest stand. The largest is like 160 scale, which means that, yeah. Um, so again, it is how much time and effort you want to put into, uh, <laughs> I would not recommend jumping in with like a huge, a uh, hundred dollar kit that's going to take up like so much shelf space, you know, um, any, any other questions so far? Slowly padding camera. Don't want to lock into place in case you have to move it again. There. Uh, on my end. Okay. Um, yeah. So someone here, let's see, Nikolai, you, you build a lot of cars, car kits. I would love to get some recommendations from you on what I would start with as far as there. Um, used to. Okay. I'm just going to let it, let it pan down on its own here. Space. Okay. Yeah, I hear that. Um, yeah. Like eventually, I've got a little extra revel. Okay, yeah, I've got a little extra space, so I've been able to build as I please. But I am eyeing how much space I have left here for each of these, you know. And so, hard to build something classic. I'm not much of a car guy, so something iconic, classic. Um, recognizable, like. I don't know, the Model T, a Beetle, car, truck. Okay, yeah, car. That's pretty iconic. Gumpo, yeah. Go to your store and browse. Yeah, Michael's also sells. Okay, yeah, good idea. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you know, getting, you know, these ha is a problem. Um, down here in Florida, I've only found like two or three stores that sell the mecha and anime kind. Um, you know, if you're the cars and trucks you can obviously find at Hobby Lobby or otherwise. Um, you know, you can go on Amazon, but a lot of those stores on Amazon are dealing with uh, very shipping rate issues. More than a couple of times I've had packages that get tied up in customs for, yeah, for like a couple months, literally. Like I've ordered a set back in March and it only showed up a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, and so, so you know, getting this stuff is a bit dicey sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I would recommend if you know if you find a store near you or that can ship to you, uh, patronize them instead of relying on Amazon. Well, if you kit had tires that are too big for the wheels, yeah, I've. Uh, I've, I've had that a couple of times for Mecca here, just kind of pieces that refuse to fit or fell off. But there's a zombie down here somewhere. Can't unwieldy thing. Uh, I see shops. Yeah. Um, my favorite. 
look at them. Like I'm trying not to make this whole panel just me showing off my toys. Yeah, USA, that's the one I use. The uh, USA Gundam store, they're actually based uh, over on the east coast of Florida in Daytona. I think that's it. Um, I've been meaning to go over there in person. Yeah. Is, is Hoppins throwing again? I, I No, but keep, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter now. This is close to the end of the panel, but it's not. Oh, for you, okay, good for you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been meaning to go over to their store for in Daytona. It's just that you know, when it's been open, it's been when I've been working. So I've ha I'm trying to get my schedule worked out so I can make the uh, trip over there. Um, but in the meantime, I have ordered nearly everything you see here from them. So not to, they didn't want to like make this a sponsored thing, but yeah, I also have their uh official branded nippers here, which work pretty well, though I still, yeah, still very much, where did I put them hit here? These here have my recommendation, the, uh, the Tom, Tom, Tomia God Hands, I think they're called, that have a plastic molded grip. A lot of these have kind of this rubber dipped grip, which works, but you know, you're going to be squeezing these over and over, putting a lot of force on them. And, you know, you want to have something that feels comfortable and feels nice to touch because, you know, 50% of this is cutting the little plastic pieces out and the other 50% putting together. So you want something a little easier on your hands. Uh, no, it is not. Um, I mean, it's not, but the thing is that if you... If you put force on, you have to put a good amount of force on there, and there's a pretty good chance you will do stress damage to the little plastic bits as you do so. Um, some of them are like if you, especially the very big pieces, like uh, like the shield on that big one I was showing you. Uh, you know, if you put force on there, you might snap the uh, the shield into the little yeah, you know. So it's, it's just genuinely recommended get a smoother cut. You just use a snippers. It also means you don't have to put nearly as much force on there. You can just snip, snip, and snip, and you're done. Oh, there we go. It's falling over. Hello Gundam is very top heavy. All right. And that just about does it for time. Uh, Yep, that is a Hello Kitty Gundam. Um, that is from their crossover. Um, it has the uh, the Gundam body and the Hello Kitty head and then a Gundam helmet. Yep. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a... It's like a 30-minute animation, but there is a crossover. Um, where I haven't seen it myself, but it's like the protagonist of the original Gundam encounters Halo Kitty, and Halo Kitty is giant robot sized. And they have, I don't know if they fight or if they just have a heart to talk or what, but it it's out there. Uh, yeah, so thank you all. I'll let you go. Check out the probably more interesting uh, lowering panel. I know I'm going to. Uh, thank you to the moderators for helping me host this. And enjoy Megaplex.